Nobody wants colorectal cancer, so you want to get screened for colon cancer, but you don't want a colonoscopy done or you can't get one done. That's why I'm making this video today. Today we're going to be talking about alternatives to colonoscopy for colorectal cancer screening. At some point in our lives, we all need to be screened for colorectal cancer. It's one of the leading cancer killers out there and it's totally preventable. We're going to be going over the pros and cons for all the different strategies and if you can't get a colonoscopy done, it doesn't mean you shouldn't get screened, right? Some form of screening is always better than no screening at all. And I get it, some people have medical conditions where you can't get a colonoscopy done. Some people don't have access to somebody who does colonoscopies. Some people can't leave home easily to get a colonoscopy. And some people just don't like the idea of having a scope inserted into the colon or don't like to deal with the bowel prep to clean out the colon or don't wanna go under anesthesia. I get it. By the way, I'm Dr. Austin Chang and I'm a board certified gastroenterologist. Here are my credentials and and on this channel, we talk about gut health and all things related to my medical journey. So over the past year, there's been a lot of attention on colorectal cancer, in part because of the unfortunate passing of the Chadwick Boseman. And since I made that last video inspired by his passing, there have been some updates. The main one being that now colorectal cancer screening is recommended for everyone starting at age 45. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Bozeman, it wouldn't have picked up his cancer in time, but I also don't know any underlying conditions that he might have had. Now, this recommendation of age 45 is a bit nuanced still. The US Preventive Services Task Force does give screening starting at age 50 a grade A recommendation, but for ages 45 to 49, it's currently a grade B recommendation. And the latest guidelines from one of our major GI professional societies that just was released this year recommend screening for everyone age 50 plus, but suggest screening for ages 45 to 49. Now this is for average risk individuals. If you have an underlying condition like inflammatory bowel disease, some sort of hereditary cancer syndrome, or a family history of a first degree relative, a parent, sibling, or child with a history of colon cancer or some sort of advanced polyp, you will need to get screening started at an earlier age. For those of you who fall into the family history category, you will need to get screened starting at age 40 or 10 years before your family member was diagnosed. The reason why a colonoscopy is the gold standard is because it's a cancer prevention study. Not only can you detect something early on before it turns into a cancer, but you can also remove it on the spot. With that said, any of these other alternatives that we're gonna be talking about, you may still need a colonoscopy as a follow-up if the test is positive. And keep in mind that even with a colonoscopy, there's no such thing as a perfect screening test. You might still have a very small chance of missing a polyp or cancer, so just keep that in mind even for any of these alternatives. We can basically divide these alternatives into stool-based tests versus image-based tests. And when we're thinking about the pros and cons of all these alternatives, think about not only the effectiveness of these tests, but also the convenience of it, whether or not it can be done at home, the risks involved, whether it's a procedure, whether it's more invasive or less invasive, or if there's radiation, the difficulty of doing it, do you still need to drink a bowel prep and clean out your colon, whether it's covered by insurance, and screening intervals. How often do you need to get these tests done? With a colonoscopy, if everything comes back normal, you're good for 10 years. So starting with the stool-based test, the first one is a fecal immunohistochemical test or FIT test. This test basically checks for hidden blood in your stool and it detects the globin part of hemoglobin within your red blood cell. Now, unlike the Guaiac fecal occult blood test, the FIT test is more specific. It's better at detecting blood that's coming from your colon or the lower part of your gut rather than somewhere higher up like your stomach because globin coming from higher up in your gut is gonna be digested by the time it reaches your colon. Plus, unlike the Guaiac fecal occult blood test, this is less influenced by vitamins that you're taking, any foods that you're eating like certain fruits or vegetables, or the blood in red meat, for instance. And the pros of this stool test, I think are pretty obvious. You can do it at home. It's not invasive. It doesn't require a procedure or anesthesia. But if it's positive, you may still need a colonoscopy. It can still miss polyps and you need to get this done every single year. And that's every single year for potentially 30 years. Now, similar to a FIT test is the multi-targeted FIT DNA test. It does the same thing as the FIT test, plus it detects cancer-related DNA. So it's much more specific. But just because you're detecting cancer-related DNA, the same problem exists of not being able to detect something that's early on, like a polyp before it's turned into something more serious. Also, considering all things are normal, you have to get this done every three 
three years. Good news is it's covered by Medicare and most other insurers, but again, you might still need a colonoscopy if the test comes back positive. Moving on to image-based tests, the first one I'm gonna talk about is a CT colonography. Basically, it's a CAT scan, a CT scan, that takes pictures of cross-sectional images of your belly and your colon, and it creates this 3D reconstruction that allows doctors to see if there are any polyps or cancers. Now, aside from the fact that it's not a colonoscopy and it's not a procedure that you have to undergo, that's about where the benefit ends. You still have to go to the hospital or an imaging center. You still have to drink a bowel prep to clean out your colon. During the scan, they may have to insert a tube into your colon to inject air to allow things to be seen better. There's little radiation exposure with a CAT scan. There's still the possibility of false positives or missed polyps. And not all insurance covers it. Like Medicare, for instance, currently doesn't cover CT colonography. And if everything comes back normal, you have to do this every five years. Now, similar to a colonoscopy is a flexible sigmoidoscopy. It's basically the same thing except you're only taking a partial look a third into the colon. The benefit is that it's a little more comfortable, you might not even need anesthesia for this, but the cons are that you're not looking at the whole colon. But if everything comes back normal, the recommendation is every five years for this. Capsule colonoscopy is another cool technology where patients can swallow a pill camera that takes pictures all throughout your gut and allows doctors to look inside the colon from those pictures and see if there are any polyps or cancers. The benefit of this is you're avoiding a procedure and you can potentially do this at home as well. But the downside again is that if there's a positive test, you will need a colonoscopy anyway and you can still miss polyps or get false positives. If everything comes back normal, every five years for the capsule colonoscopy. By the way, if any of these alternative tests come back positive and you need a colonoscopy afterwards, that colonoscopy might not be covered by insurance. I know, that's how messed up our US healthcare system is. It used to even be that even with a screening colonoscopy, if we found something and then ended up taking it out, that therapy of taking it out could sometimes cost extra. But fortunately, this surprise billing that goes with polyp removal is no longer a thing as of December 2020, thanks to the Removal of Barriers to Colorectal Cancer Screening Act. Now, if we had to rank all these strategies in the top tier is the gold standard, the colonoscopy, and annual fit testing. Of course, when public health officials and agencies are ranking all of these tests, they're also taking into consideration cost effectiveness and other sorts of public health limitations. But for you, you have to talk to your doctor to see what's most appropriate for your situation. Now, there are other tests that have either been developed or are in the pipeline, like a blood test, for instance, that's currently not recommended because it's not good at detecting any of these things. But who knows, technologies might improve and we might see screening look different in the future. Now, if you know anyone who might benefit from the information in this video, please go ahead and share it. Leave me any questions you might have in the comment section below and give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. It would really help me out and click the red subscribe button below and turn on the notification bell to be notified every time I post a new video. All right, that's it for today's video. Please stay safe and healthy. Until the next time, I will see you in my next video. Bye.